Hi there, welcome. This is part four of uh, Vast the Crystal Caverns. We're going to delve deeper into the uh, Crystal Caverns this this uh, turn. This is turn three. And as usual, we start with the knight. Right. Um, a few cubes, more cubes available. We've got the one on the pixie lantern. We can take that off. One on the shield, one on the bomb, and uh, one on movement here. So we've got four hero cubes we can start with. In the cave, we're over here at the moment. Um, there's a crystal, but it's one, two, three, four movement away. Um, there's a nice dragon gem there for the taking, but that's one, two, three, four, five movement away. To attack the dragon himself with a bomb, one, well, if we, unless we bomb through there, we could maybe get your secret passage through there. It would be one, two, three, four away. But if we come this way, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six away. Yeah, so a bit of a conundrum there. Ah, we can use the portholes. So I could come through here, the pits. A movement to get there costs a movement to travel through the pits. So that would be one, two, three, four. That would only take four, but no, no, um, uh, using a hero cube for the ancient map or bombing anywhere. So that might be a thing to get to the dragon. Also, I would not mind at all getting that um, that dragon gem neither because we do have a side quest card here. It'd be nice to complete one of these. Uh, where is it? Yep, yeah, attempt to pick up a dragon gem. So that would be pretty nice. Um, so, first of all, we've got our one inbuilt movement and our one perception. You know, I'm tempted just to flip this tile over, see what. So we'll, with our one movement, we'll, we'll flip this tile, and our inbuilt perception, we'll flip this tile. Let's see what happens. As we flip it, oh, it's an ambush. Damn. We're going to get grit anyway. So we've got another grit. We're on 16 grit now. A couple more, we can lock an, unlock another hero cube. But it is an ambush. So the goblin player will ambush us, ambush us with a hidden tribe and he has a hidden, hidden tribe. Now his hidden tribe <coughs> is two, uh, a power of two, but we do get a choice and a chance, so it's lucky this happened early on, to overcome that by um, beefing up our strength. So I think unfortunately that's what we're going to have to do. So we're going to have to put one on strength, so it's two. Now the goblin tribe has to be greater um, than us to ambush us. So we can't do that now because the goblin tribe's on two and we're on two. Um, what, what monster has he got? When this tribe uses the reveal action you may place its... No. So we're fine there. So I think we've negated that. Um, for one movement and one perception I think I'm going to go out, go out for revealing this tile here now. Ah, first of all the cave, there's two open edges that the cave would need to uh, fill in. So we'll put one here uh, and one here. Um, the cave will draw back up to its three hand tiles. Um, it's an open edge. And there's an open edge here, Donna's just pointed out, yes, we should have filled that in. There's an open edge here as well, uh, which will come, of course, come from the cave. So let's fill that open edge in here. There we go. So, um, right, I made an error there because I do not fill open edges around um, special terrain. I knew something wasn't quite right. So there we go. We're back where we should be. The open edges have been filled. Um, right, so um, I was on this ambush tile here. Uh, I think for one perception and one movement, now I've used my inbuilt perception and movement, use one hero cube on our strength to negate the being ambushed. Um, I'm going to use the pixie lantern for one movement and one perception. So we can totally um, deal with this tile now. Let's hope it's somewhat good. And it's a crystal. So that's pretty nice. Um, I think we'll have it that way. 
So the crystal will come onto the tile. There it is. Now, if we have a strength of three, we can smash that crystal for two grit. But that means using up a hero cube to do it. Because <clears throat> we've got a strength of two. Um, do we... Oh, and really, I do want to um, unlock another hero cube at least. Now, what's the easiest way of doing that? If we go through the pit for two movement uh, onto there, pick that up. Do you know what? We're not going to do everything that I wanted to do anyway this turn. So I think I think we're going to smash that crystal. So put another one onto strength. Gives us free strength. We can smash that crystal because we're interacting with the tile because we spent a perception using the pixie lantern. I'm going to smash that crystal, put it here, and we're going to gain two grit. One, two. Gives us another hero cube. We've got two hero cubes left. Um, what can I do with two hero cubes? So right now I can gain two movement with one of the hero cubes. One, two, but that's not enough to get that'll get me uh, no, it's not enough to get me to the pit and through. And um, we've got walls to deal with. Um Right, I think uh all best laid plans and everything, I think I'm best trying to see what the, what what's on this tile because it's it's about the only thing can I actually even get there? I've got two hero cubes left. Um, the trouble is it's going to take free movement to get there. Um, oh, I can't do it. So, because I would have to use both these hero cubes to, to get to that tile. Um, right, you know what, with my last two cubes, I think... Um, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to bomb through this wall here. So I've got a, a way of getting through there for next, for next turn. And I'm then going to leave my last remaining cube on um, the shield so it protects me from losing grit. That's it. Not a very productive turn for the, for the um, knight. But he has gained another hero cube to use, so he would have now one, two, three, four, uh, five hero cubes at his disposal. So that concludes the knight's third turn. Right, welcome. This is the uh, third turn of the goblins. Welcome to the goblins' turn. So a few things. Let's let's have a look what's going on. So we got the cave here. Quite a lot of exploration. The Fangs tribe. Now they can. They're on free population for uh, strength, so we can populate them one more. We don't want to op overpopulate them because. If we do that, we're going to lose our one rage. We're on one measly rage. Uh, or um, we'd have to scatter. And if we scatter, we lose two uh, goblins out of our tribe and we'll come back hidden. Um, so we, we really do not want to do that. Uh, the Bones tribe, well, there's no population there whatsoever at the moment. They're a bit, uh, a bit sorry, them, at the moment. Um, the Eye tribe is hidden, but it's got two populations. So, first things first. Oh, and we do have this goblin ruby. The uh, secret that we um, can uh, redraw our war card um, or any any one of the cards, but yeah. And the other secret, oh, we've got the hex. Now the hex can mainly I would want to use it on the knight to make him lose five grit and or sorry four grit, get the eye tribe up to four and make him lose four grit. But at the moment he's got his shield up, so we're only going to make him lose one grit. So. We'll hold on to that for the moment as well, I think. Um, so, what we'll do is, first of all, draw the war card. We can only draw the one. Uh, oh, Desolation. So, we get one. Oh, that's actually handy. We get one on the um, on the Fangs tribe. So, they're maxed out now. Now, they're pretty strong. They're powerful. I'm going to try and do some damage with them this go. Because they are now... On four population plus their inbuilt one extra strength, they've got five strength. Um, the Bones tribe get a couple, which is handy. So they're getting populated. Um, and the Eye tribe gets two. Wow, they're on full population. There we go. This is a good card. So we also get one monster and one secret. 
So we'll get a monster and secret. Let's just put this back into the deck so it's all shuffled up. So we get a monster. Oh, an ogre. Right, okay. So this tribe gets plus one strength with the ogre. Now there is a little token to mark the ogre here. So we'll just put him out. Let's put him in the bones tribe because we can carry two, two cards there. We'll put the ogre there. And we've got these red discs. We'll signify that this tribe has now got an extra strength. So the Bones tribe has got two population, but it's got a strength of three now because the Ogre, he is in the party. Um, we've also got a secret to pick, so let's pick the secret. If it's not good, we could always use our Goblin Ruby. Um, I'll pick up two cards. Make sure I pick up the top card. There we go. We've got Blind Fury. That little guy there. Um, Pick a tribe, during this turn, it moves through lit tiles without losing population. Right. That could be very handy for our fang tribe. Um, I'm going to play it face up and use it this turn on the fangs tribe. So let's just put that above the fangs there. They've got blind fury this time. So they're, they're not going to get harmed by the light. Okay, we've populated our tribes. Um, We've chosen the war cards, we've uh, populated the, uh, populate the tribes, assigned the monsters, drawn secrets, and now we're going to perform actions, one per tribe. First of all, with the Fangs tribe, let's go for it, they've got unlimited movement. These can move. Yeah. Pick a tribe, during this turn it moves through lit tiles without losing population. Although, well that's amazing, isn't it? Because we would have, this would have been one, every two we lose a population, so one, two. We'd have lost two population. And we'd only add um, two population, but we're actually full strength here. We come to him, come to the knight with full strength. We're going to do the knight some damage now, and uh, he he loses some more health. He's down to only five health now. We've chopped him down a couple of pegs, and um, in the excitement, the tribe scatters as usual, and moves loses two population. But because we won't, I mean that would have been desperate for the for the fangs tribe but having that blind fury was awesome so they've uh, still got two population there so that's the fangs tribe very successful we've got one in on the night so that secret card we'll just put there into discards uh, we've done the fangs tribe oh look the fangs tribe they've got the blob with him if this tribe uses the attack action against the knight, the knight also loses 5 grit. In an ambush, um, on strength 3, they lose 5 grit. Uh, so, the knight can only lose a maximum of 1 grit So he's, because he's got his shield up, but he will lose grit. So, we'll put him down 1. He's lost a grit. So that was a very successful attack by, by uh, the Fangs tribe. They did well. The Bones tribe, let's get them out on the map. Um, right, uh, they've got plus one strength with the ogre, so even though the, the, they've only got a population of two, they've got a strength of three, so I think, I think we'll put them here, there we go, pretty close to the knight, and then the gnome tribe, they're, they've got good population, full four, um, for the eye tribe, sorry, call them the gnome tribe because they've got a gnome with them. Uh, when this tribe uses the reveal action, you may place its piece on a dark tile with any tribe symbol. So we might use that now. This does not have to go on an eye symbol, which there's only one out on the map, and it's right over here. So I think, let's, uh, let's flank the knight. Let's put it out there. Ordinarily, this could not go on the um, fang symbol, but it can because of the gnome, the cheeky little gnome. Uh, and that... Yep, that concludes the Goblin's turn. Right, here we go. This is the Dragon's third turn. Right, he's going to move his two moves first and pick up... I'll do the treasure after, pick that up, yeah. Um, I'm going to get the tribes. Um, so I'm going to do Hiss, which is two claws. Right. Um, force a Goblin tribe anywhere on the map to become hidden and lose a population, and I oh. eat the Goblin. So... Oh. That one's got the most, so I'll go for that one. And I eat a goblin. 
Um, what am I going to do next? Um, I'm going to do Scorch, which is reveal all surrounding tiles. So, reveal this one. Treasure. Mm -hmm. So, a treasure token goes on. There. Um, Handy for the cave, all this treasure and stuff hanging in it. I've got a wing and a flame left. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll use these two, wing and a flame. Oh no, it's a claw, sorry, it's a claw. Um, wing and a claw. Yeah, is not, a wing, not a wing and a prayer? No. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I haven't read this one yet. Move a dragon gem or treasure token on an adjacent tile by five tiles in any combination of directions obeying walls. The token can't stop on a tile with a player. So move a dragon dragon gem. Yeah, but it's from, remember, it's on an adjacent tile, so that's one next to the dragon. Yeah, I've got a treasure token here. Is there any purpose in moving it? Because he's... Yeah. Wow, I mean, you've got to get through a pit to actually get there unless somebody blows that wall. Yeah. Maybe it's not a... Um, I say it's, in, it's up to you, but I say it's in a pretty safe place. It's very hard to get to, isn't it? Yeah. No, we'll leave that. We'll leave that one. I'll do the just do the claw. Yeah. Which is uh, called claw. Roll the dragon die. Yeah. So that one. Mhm. Mm um, affected tiles, goblin tiles, tiles scatter. Well, there's no tribes near anyway, so that's yeah. worked. But it's worth trying. Okay. I'm not going to use that one. When you reveal them, do they come back to you? Them, them, them tokens. They do, don't they? You've used them. No, they stay there. The next go. So now I've used my powers and I've moved. Mm -hmm. So now is pick up treasure. So I pick that treasure up. Just the one on you. Just one. Yeah. yeah. And I get a sloth token from greed because I've picked a treasure token up. Yeah. Um. What's your stats then, now? I'm on um, two armour and four spirit. Yeah. Um, now it's place a dragon gem. So mm -hmm. I have to put that with the dragon. Yeah. And then I get um, one off pride because I've got dragon gems already on there. Yeah. So I'm still on two armour and four spirit. Um, and now I just shuffle my hand and pick up cards. And now I get four cards. Not four yeah. cards still. And that's my turn. Okay, Dave, that concludes the dragon's third turn. Right, welcome to the cave's third turn. What is the cave going to do to the uh, the knight, the goblins, or the dragon this turn? Well, oh, one thing I remembered. The goblins got a successful hit, didn't they? Um, so when they do that and they scatter, after a successful hit, they, they satisfy some of their rage and they lose a rage, so their rage would be on zero. Now, as it happens, it's a bit irrelevant in this case because... If the rage is on zero, it automatically resets to one next time so they can get a war card. But just to remember that if they get a successful attack, their, their, their rage goes down. They're satisfied, aren't they? So they lose a rage. And incidentally, I know it's the cave's turn, but on the goblins as well. If ever during their turn, their rage meter goes to zero. Now, it didn't affect this turn because others were not revealed. The strength of all the tribes, they get malaise. So they get a bit despondent, and the strength of all tribes is reduced by one if rage is at zero uh, during the turn. So that just, just wanted to clear that up. Right, we're on the cave. Come on, what are we going to do? So we've got this left over, some diamonds here in our op omens um, spot here on the board. Um, looking at the cave, we have a crystal and we have a treasure. So we look on the chart, two to three, we get three omens. Let's hope that we're going to get something pretty decent this time. Let's have a look. Um, right, we have a bat, an Easter egg, and a mushroom. Uh, it's probably a dragon's egg, actually. So, and, of course, the diamonds. So, what can we do? Um, our, our biggest adversary... Um, might well be, I don't know really, it, whoever's in, the, we, we want enough time to fill out this cave with tiles and then start collapsing it to win. Right, do you know what? 
let's um, let's. I think if we use the bat here. No, let's see. Um, I've got diamonds. If I could do a slide there. And yeah, I've got an idea. Right. Yeah, we could do this. So, and here's an idea. If you put it on the on the actual writing and then slide them up when you've, when you've executed them, it's a good thing to do. So I've got an idea now. Giant bats. Let's use giant bats. It costs one omen. There's a bat there, so we've matched that up. And it is for one omen, choose a treasure token, the knight, or a goblin tribe, and move it by up to three tiles in any directions, but not through walls. The knight cannot be moved onto a dark tile or a tile with another player. So I think we're going to mess with the knight. This 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 is not a wall because it's been blown through. Move it by up to uh, three tiles. I know it doesn't harm him in the lava unless he spent his entire turn in there. But let's do this for a bit of a bit of a laugh. Let's let's. The giant bats are coming through the cave. The knight gets frightened, runs through here. One, two, three. Now let's just leave him there by up to three tiles. Let's leave him there, and then he's ran into the lava, uh, into the magma. To get rid of it because he was scared by the giant bats and as he scuttled through lo and behold there was a rock slide now we forced the knight whatever he was going to do around here the knight is not now because there's walls here unless he uses hero cubes to blow through he's going to have to come all the way around here or or he could step off the map tile and come this way but he would have to engage that strong goblin tribe um, and, and equal its power and spend cubes that way. So yeah, we're messing with the knight pretty good there. So we've had a rock slide as well. And now, with our final omen, um, I'm thinking we shall uh, place the tile because that's what part of our win conditions, isn't it? So let's have a look at the tiles. And um, we'll put this one out. Uh, anywhere on the map, where are we gonna go? Um, I'm thinking, uh, let's just put it here. Yeah, there we go. Um, we've used all the omens. And uh, shape, now, so to collect the omens, we shape the cave. So we draw back up. Okay, and let's shape the cave. So we get to place another tile. I think we'll go here now. Draw back up. Okay, it's getting mighty big. Um, there is ways of get, you can even do stuff to collapse the cave, can't you, Donna, with the dragon? Yeah. There is ways. The other ways means that the cave can start collapsing. And uh, as my final um, trick for the cave, I shall uh, place a treasure. So I'm going to place it well out of the way here. There we go. Well, that's the uh, final turn of the cave. So if you actually look, it's, it's very fascinating, isn't it? Um, the dragon needs another one, two, three, four, five, six cubes. He's just six sloth cubes coming over here to his wakefulness track before he wakes up. He has to surface through a crystal tile. Well, there's one here, pretty close to the... Well, yeah, this one's the closest one mm, to the entrance. So maybe it could be worth putting a rock slide on here to stop him because once he's surfaced he has to obey normal rules um, and he has to surface through a crystal tile and get to the entrance um, so he's a, he's he's a, you know he's only six cubes away from that uh, the cave the cave's doing pretty good the cave's quite large isn't it we've got right through a lot of tiles there so he just needs to start banging those tiles down um, the goblins, yeah, I mean, they've only got to attack the knight one, two, three, four, five more times and they would win the game. Um, and the knight killing the dragon, uh, oh, yeah, they need to do a bit. Do you know what? The, knights didn't, the knight didn't get through and bomb him, did he? We should have shown that, really. But uh, anyway, yeah, the knight's got a bit of work to do on the dragon. So very fascinating. Lots of fun. Right, so there's lots of potential. The dragon's in it. The cave's in it, the goblins are in it, and the knight is in it. The knight's got to start swinging that sword, uh, or dropping them bombs even. So, that is the uh, third round tie-up of Vast the Crystal Caverns. Thanks for watching.